So we're probably, we're going to get started in a minute um, and then we'll go from, from there. Um, it's been a, it's been a bit of a big week, no doubt for, for you as well. Um, there's been a lot of changes. I think this is a, a really good topic for us now because I think the way we we have worked and have always worked will be will be changing um, as we go whether or not it changes permanently or not but but learning ways to to be the most productive that you can be while you while you're self isolating and being safe for yourself and the community is is really important so thank you for taking the time to join us today um, I'm just going to I guess get started so um, look what's what's been happening is um, you know there's a, a there's a, a lot of things happening in the world right now um, our current situation is that we're all we're all out of our depth um, with what's happening outside of our control um, there are a few things that we we can control and of course that is you know our environment where we choose to work how we choose to work so um, I thought it'd be really beneficial and hopefully helpful to share some of the ways that um, I enjoy working from home I find it really um, enjoyable and think I can be a lot more productive when working from home so um, yeah so if you've um, started working from home already you probably noticed how different it is from working in a corporate environment so you know in your corporate environment or, or in your workplace environment there are you know some societal rules that we must follow which is to um, follow a dress code um, and to you know be be social there's less of a need to be social so it's kind of an introverts paradise um, the old the old working from home there is definitely a more relaxed dress code um, I've been known to wear active wear most of the time um, and some of the things some of the things or the benefits that come with that is is also that you can um, sit however you want and and create the workspace that you want um, which is which is lovely you know you're not really stuck with a workspace that is dictated by bulk buying so you can create the environment that you would like to work in um, okay so some of the things I'm going to be talking about today are things that work for me um, but what is really important to know is that you've got to find what works for you so a lot of its trial and error you know none of this I, I came I came across on my own and none of these are really I guess new that I've come to to know these things about myself and know these things about my work habits through trial and error so um, I just want you to know that you don't have to do things the way that I do them you can you can take the time and find out how you'd um, like to work so if you have any questions during this just um, pop them pop the comment on the side and we'll we'll answer them as we go um, yeah the most important thing about now is trying to make however our situation is make whatever that situation is work for us so um, I'm gonna go start on the strategies that work for me if that's that's cool okay so the first strategy I wanted to talk about is uh, all about setting your routine and your boundaries. So, you know, there's there's a reason that um, parents put so much effort into maintaining a routine for their kids, um, and why there are routines around, you know, your school hours and everything like that. It's because the routine helps you to stay focused it helps you just you know what you're doing so you don't need to use bandwidth on deciding what to do all the time so a routine is really important um, and and just knowing what what works for you and when it works for you 
So there's so much out there about morning routines. <clears throat> For example, I don't know if you've heard of Rachel Hollis, but she's an entrepreneur and a, co a coach, and she is big on 5 a.m. starts. And she like gets up at 5 a.m. every day and journals, and then she goes and exercises for another hour. So me, I can't, I can't do that. I'm a, I don't mind a six o'clock beginning, but 5 a.m. is just a little bit too much. So, you know, every morning I'll get up, I'll put on my active wear and I'll head downstairs and I will do uh, 15 to 30 minutes of yoga or high intensity workout. I'll either do that at home or I've got, um, I used to go to Studio Pilates and do a Pilates workout, but, um, always try and get my exercise in. Um, I never used to like morning exercise. I've found that that has changed over time. Um, so I guess, you know, the, the, the joy of that is that you just change with what works for you when. So, you know, for you, it might be you need to have breakfast first or the coffee is the most important thing. Um, and that's, that's awesome too. It isn't necessarily important what you do, but whatever it is, it just has to give you a reason to um, take a moment just for you. Um, that's really important. You know, people talk about people talk about you know making the bed being the the start to a successful day, but you know what they're trying to say with that is how you start your day sets the tone for the remainder of your day. So it's kind of um, it's a good little uh, a good little hi Sam. <laughs> um, it's a good little reminder that yeah, just just make sure that your day starts how you mean to continue. Um, just find out how you work best and do that. So I guess the second tip around the routine is is finding out when your brain is ready to to work. So if you work best for you know the first three hours of the day and then don't hit your stride again until 6 p.m., you know do that. You might need to do some mindset work on not feeling guilty for the time in between. But you know, if you're not going to be productive or you're not going to be able to focus because, you know, you've used all of your mental bandwidth in the morning, then, you know, there's, um, yeah, the, the finding out when you are your most valuable to, to the world around you and to your work and then sticking with that and building a routine around that will really help. So, um, you know, when you're when you're home it's so easy to slack off you know it's so much easier to slack off to just watch a tv show in the morning and then maybe watch another one um, maybe just scroll for half an hour on socials or take an extra 15 on your break um, you know i still have i still have days where you know at lunchtime i might stop and i might just watch you know one episode of Grey's anatomy and then all of a sudden, you know, it's two hours later and I'm out of the vortex. So it's really important that if you've got a routine, you try and stick to it because once you break it, it's a lot harder to get back. You can't go back in time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's ultimately what I want to say about your routine is that it's easier to have space to be disciplined within the boundaries of a routine so I find it much easier to not have chocolate if I'm doing a lot you know a lot of good regular exercise and I'm eating healthy if I'm um, not very disciplined in that area having you know I can always indulge in chocolate and I just have to have and then I'm like, well, my diet's done. That's it. I'm going off. So, you know, if you have um, some discipline and a routine and um, everything, it'll make working working from home a lot, a lot more simple. Um, you know, if your partner is working from home with you, I think setting, setting boundaries is really important. Um, making sure that you both know when your working focus time is and when your um, when your social time is and it is important to do both check in with each other because you know you might be working from home but you're also a couple and you're both trying to make it in this big bad world so um, you know there is you know ask for the space and time you need to do your work 
and if you know whatever that means for you if that means you're sharing cooking the dinner between the two of you so three nights a week you cook dinner three nights a week he cooks dinner that's great um you know and if you're not a morning person but your husband is or your wife is um my husband is not fan of me in the mornings because i'm a little bit on the chipper side but you know i just i just start my day how i start it and then um and then i rain that sunshine on him so the poor guy generally suffers suffers <laughs> at the hands of my cheeriness um you know work is work set those boundaries as well don't you know don't do laundry unless it's on your lunch break or another designated break what you don't want is your your work flow to be interrupted by thoughts of things you should be doing around the house that's your house and this is your work so there's a bit of bit of headspace uh, work and a bit of um, a, a bit of mindset work to do around what what work to do when I guess um, the say well that was all the first strategy but I promise the rest will go faster because the first one is by far the most important um, you know having having that routine and having those boundaries in place are going to set you up for a really successful fruitful work from home life um, and knowing what to expect and knowing what to um, and knowing how to I guess navigate your your working at home will really set you up for, for the success there so strategy number two have a clean workspace I cannot say this enough a clean workspace will make such a huge difference to the feelings you have of overwhelm so keep it minimal if possible or, or surround it with things that love that you love and keep you feeling zen so wherever I work I bring two seconds I like to have this beautiful bunch of flowers that I use in photo shoots and everything it was given to me by a gorgeous friend um, and they just I just look at them and I feel you know they I feel relaxed and I feel um, calmer just having a little bit of nature around me whether or not it's light or not they're dried flowers but you know having something beautiful that that makes me feel um, that makes me feel good in my workspace makes a difference to how how I feel generally so you know use things to help keep you tidy Marie Kondo your desk if that's the case you know put everything in a place with other things of that like so you know use boxes use desk trays and things um, you know we sell a lovely range of desk trays that I love um, but yes I highly recommend using using tools and using um, nice homewares to make your workspace beautiful the third strategy is to get fresh air so this is going to work out perfectly for for those of us who um, also are self isolating get outside get some fresh air so you know there are no rules as to what that is involved if you have a balcony get outside in your balcony if you have a yard get out in your yard get some movement going have a dance do a quick yoga flow at lunch you don't have to do a 45 minute structured routine with 15 pieces of equipment um, but what's really important is to just change the change your perspectives you know not look at your screen all day not look at your work all day um, break away from that get some movement get your heart pumping and um, get some get some air in your lungs and um, get out of the house if you can um, you know you don't have to be out for three hours you can go out for 20 minutes and and I think you know especially if you're feeling overwhelmed just taking that step back can really give you that sense of you know you can you can do this you can come back with clear head and focus on what you need to do so the next strategy is all about the work itself so I don't know about you but I've always got a lot of different projects and a lot of um, tasks that need to be done so how um, how I've found over time what really helps me not to become overwhelmed with how much both I have to do and how much I want to do 
um, is to write it all out. So every now and then I will stop, you know, stop filling out my diary and I will do what um, is called a mind sweep. So uh, David Allen, who is, I guess, the founder of the Getting Things Done framework of productivity, he does a um, guided mind sweep. So that can really help you to get everything out of your brain and categorize it. So what area of your life is, and he's talking not just about work. He's sort of like, if there's a light bulb that needs changing, put that on the list because that is something that's taking up some bandwidth in your brain. Get it all down um, because, you know, it's not that everything that you write down needs to be done, but what you're doing is you're writing down everything that's in your head. And to be honest, we've all got a lot going on at the moment. Um, inside our heads, there's our you know, emotional health, there's our mental health, there's our financial health, and then there's your, your job security. Um, you know, there, <laughs> there's food scarcity or perceived food scarcity. Um, so, you know, there's a lot going on at the moment. So get all of that out there. You know, get all of it out of your head onto a piece of paper um, because you can't, you know, not everything needs to be done. And then from that big piece of paper, then you can group those tasks or those things into areas. So you can group it into home, work, you can group it into, you know, certain projects that you want to receive, you want to work on, sorry, and certain goals. Um, by doing that, you sort of get an idea on, you know, what is taking up your bandwidth and what kind of time you're going to have to invest to get all of that done. And I think what you'll find is that you don't actually need to get a lot of the stuff in your massive list done and where you've batched things together um, and break broke it down into blocks of work. I think you'll find that, um, you know, you'll feel a lot more like you're on top of things, like you can you can get this done. So once you've done all of that, then you can break those projects or those goals down into blocks of work and schedule those in. So that's when your diary and your planner come into their own. Um, and, and when I say schedule, then I mean, I'm not saying schedule every minute of your day in, that's impossible and really it's a recipe for disappointment. What you don't want to do is at the end of every day have so many things in your to-do list that you just have to write them in the next day. You don't want to have to be replicating your work over and over again and it doesn't feel good having to move things from day to day or week to week that you're just not getting done. It doesn't feel great and what we want you to do is to feel great at the end of every single day. We want you to feel great when you achieve things and get things done. And working from home is challenging enough in itself that what you really want to do is set yourself up for success. So, um, for example, you know, this, this morning I had one thing that I was focused on and this afternoon there are two smaller tasks. So after I finish with you guys, I know that my energy will be depleted. So I'm going to take Sanchez, my dog, for a walk and then come back and then start the next block of work. Um, there are so many tools you can use to manage this kind of work and I'm really glad you asked. <laughs> so um, the tools that I use for doing this, I use a paper planner. So I have used and I do use Canvas, Canvas Planner by Emma Lewis. She's a uh, Brisbane designer a local business so um, if you're looking for a planner that is an all-in-one that's the one you can get that at my shop and you can get it from her direct uh, the my goals range of planners are really good and there there's a lot of science underpinning the my goals planners they're they're really good if you need a lot of structure um, around everything and then you know there's the bullet journaling theory and that's for people who want complete freedom to build their own system really. So pretty much you can go from a, you know, all in one planner, you can have one that's really detailed and really structured and, and designed to give you a step by step on how to get things done. 
and then there's your complete freedom through your bullet journal or any notebook you know the bullet journal is more of a methodology as opposed to a planner itself but you know that um, that's a really good method of uh, for yourself if you would like the freedom to create your own methodology I guess um, in terms of technology I am a huge fan of Asana um, I use that in conjunction so I don't use that separately so Asana is where I keep all of my um, big goals so my yearly plan my quarterly plans everything like that is in Asana and then I use my planner my weekly planner for um, scheduling in what projects I want to work on and then I just use a notebook for when I'm brain dumping or when I'm doing a mind sweep <laughs> um, so if you're not familiar with Asana, I'm going to um, link to a woman called Louise Henry, who is brilliant at Asana. She is brilliant at teaching people about Asana and she has so many um, you know, free videos and things on how to use a project management um, software to its most, to get the most bang for if you have to spend anything your buck. Um, Asana does have a free version and that is really good and you can get away with using the free version perfectly. Um, I'm also going to link to the planners I speak about um, because they all have um, different strengths and um, you know it all depends on, on what, you're, what you're chasing as to, to which one might work for you. So I'm just going to link them all down there. They're all available um, from my shop Scratch and Jonna. And uh, I think we'll move on to the next strategy which is about time blocking. So this is, uh, this is really closely connected to the, you know, putting in your tasks or, or projects that you wanna work. So in the morning, you've got one thing you're gonna work on, you're gonna really focus on that, you're gonna get it done. But within that, you know, we can't, we humans, we're easily distracted and to maintain your focus for a long period of time is really difficult. So, you know, over a three hour period, you, you probably won't find it that you can concentrate for that entire three hours. So there are techniques and, and tools that you can use to help you to focus for a longer period of time um, and that give you like little breaks in between. So you can go away and come back and focus. So there's the Pomodoro technique. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but that's around, um, 20 minutes I think it is and then a five minute break and there are some apps that you can you can get that will help you with that. Um, you can use an album so I like to use um, on Spotify I pick an album that I want to listen to so you know a Billie Eilish album or I've been listening to the Teskey Brothers a lot lately their album is 45 minutes which is a perfect perfect block of focus time for me. Thanks for the recommendation Renee. Um, and within that 45 minute period or the 20 minute period or however long you block that time, um, you know, batching similar tasks together or, or similar projects, you know, um, together can really help you to, to really move forward quickly in those areas. So strategy number six is very closely linked to number five, which is to take breaks often. So a break doesn't mean, you know, heading to the shopping center for a little bit, though that's probably gonna be a bit difficult at the moment. Um, it, does, it does mean making sure that, you, you know, like the Pomodoro technique, you know, every 20 minutes take a five minute break. And that can be going to get a cup of tea, going to the bathroom. It can be, you know, working for one hour and taking half an hour off. You know, if you're, for that hour, you are dead set focused. Um, taking 30 minutes off is not a terrible thing and you need to refresh your brain. Your brain is, is like a muscle. If you work it, you need to rest it. So, um, you know, I probably would recommend not going straight on to consuming more or you consuming a lot of content. So going straight on to Instagram for half an hour. This is great advice for me too, by the way. Um, and then for our last strategy I think um, working on your playlist so working with music I don't know if you guys 
work with um, news on the ground as well. But I love. Um, Ah, so Jennifer, thanks for joining us, Jennifer. She said she found setting two alarms on her phone for doing stretches helps. That's a really great idea for just stepping away and then exercising at certain periods of time, making sure that you're getting that, um, you know, that, that's, that I'm a physical exertion. <laughs> Um, even if it's just stretches, but just getting in your body and out of your head um, can really help to, to reset your mind for, for more tasks. Um, thank you. That's an awesome idea. I like the idea of setting alarms for that. Um, absolute gold. Sorry about that. Um, I digress. Uh, so the last strategy is about creating playlists to work with. So some people really like um, silence while they're working and other people really love music and other people really like just that background chatter. So if you like words, if you want to hear conversations um, and things like that, ABC radio is great for listening in the background. Probably not at the moment because it's a little coronavirus heavy, but normally they have like, you know, really good shows. Um, you know, that you don't necessarily need to hear the content of, but just having that conversation in the background can be really good for, for keeping your focus on what you're doing. So Spotify is the other thing that I absolutely love, but it's the same with, um, you know, free versions like iHeartRadio is free um, and your Apple, Apple Music as well. So there's a whole category of focus playlists. So, you know, there's... Um, you know, there's classical music or jazz, there's, you know, music for concentration. There are um, playlists that are all around um, working with your brainwave. So they're at a frequency, what are they called? Um, I've got it here, frequencies of your, your brainwave. So they're great for focus and concentration. Um, there are things, there's a playlist on Spotify called binaural beats. And that is all just like, it's kind of relaxation music. Um, so I find it really helpful for focusing. Um, another tool that I use when I'm working, because I do like to have either background noise. I love working in cafes. Cafes is like my perfect work environment. Um, however, that's no longer happening. So how do you recreate the atmosphere and the noise of a bustling cafe? There's an app for that. So there's an app called Coffertivity and I absolutely love it. It, um, it does, has the soundtrack of a cafe buzzing in the background. I mean, the only other way you could probably replicate that is to put your talkback radio on and then put a pillow over the top of it so that it's like muffled talkback. But yeah, you can you can listen to coffee coffeeativity, and um, it pretty much does the same thing. You can also listen to your Spotify playlist underneath it, so you'll get that that murmuring talking on top of. Now, it doesn't smell like a cafe when you use the app, but if you brew a coffee, at the same time you've got it, you've got it there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything I was um, going to talk about today. I really hope um, that, yeah, that this has been helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Um, I am going to link now all of those things that I've mentioned, so the tools, so Asana, Louise, Henry, who else did I mention? Um, David Allen, he's got a podcast, a guided uh, mind sweep. Um, so it's just a 20 minute or half an hour mind sweep and I find listening to that and writing out my tasks really helpful. Um, uh, yeah, so so there's, um, <laughs> hi Lena, hi, An hi Andrew, <laughs> hey Susie. Um, thanks so much for joining me. If you have um, 
yeah, again, if you have any questions, just email me or message me through Facebook. I'm always available. Um, I'll add all the links to the comments on this live so you'll be able to come back to the to the live and, and check that out and of course the the live even though it's live will be um, posted onto the page so you can watch little bits later get the value out of it um, yeah thank you so much I hope everyone's doing okay these are interesting times um, but yeah thank you so much for joining me have a lovely day bye thank you